Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do your January the 14th Spiritual Principle Day in a Meditation. You can reach me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Hope you're having a beautiful morning. You're probably still asleep, but when you wake up, this meditation will be waiting for you. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the meditation. It is entitled, Discerning When to Act. We learn where we can use our energy to make a difference and where we need to let go. That is taken from the Living Clean book, Chapter 3, Awakening to Our Spirituality. Life and active addiction for many of us seem like a battle, picking sides, winners and losers, retreating in fear from all conflict, or bullying to get what we wanted. We tend to bring this mindset with us in recovery. Some of us confront and challenge more than we engage and listen. One member shared, I brought a sledgehammer to all my relationships. I felt it was my duty to pound my perspectives into every discussion. Choosing my battles was a cop-out. As we mature in our recovery, examining our behavior through step work, most of us will figure out that the we in an A doesn't really mean me plus all who agree with me. When we say the we version of the serenity prayer in our service bodies and in business meetings, we're inviting discernment into the proceedings. We ask for courage, acceptance, and wisdom to guide us. Instead of approaching service meetings like gladiator games, we concentrate on cultivating enough humility to appreciate and learn from each other. We gain trust in others and become less invested in getting our way. We apply this newer mindset in all relationships. We can also tie the serenity prayer to discernment in terms of prioritizing our time and energy. We can discern where our efforts would be best focused to change the things we can, accept what we can't, and let go when others want to make a different change than we do. We can ask ourselves whether we're getting too caught up in minor details rather than paying attention to the big picture and where we can make a positive impact. Sometimes those most discerning choices excuse me, sometimes the most discerning choice is to say nothing, step away, and let others step up. The member went on. At other times, honest self-assessment will lead me to choose a particular battle. But now I try to approach a conflict in my life with spiritual principles in my arsenal and forego the sledgehammer. This strategy can apply to so many realms within our lives, sponsoring, parenting, romantic relationships, in our jobs, while driving, and of course, in NA service. Not everything, not everything is battle worthy. Where can I? I apply my energy today so that I am contributing to the well-being of others. What situation can I pull back from that isn't benefiting me or anyone else? Beautiful meditation. Let's take a moment of silence, followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. I appreciate this meditation, um, discerning when to act. And it really is about wisdom, right? We, we talk about or say the serenity prayer often, right? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom 
to know the difference. It's such a neutral prayer. It's hard for anyone to become offended by that particular prayer. The intention of the prayer is applicable in so many different realms of our lives. Like it says here in sponsoring, parenting, romantic relationships at our jobs, while we're driving, doing service work for NA. How are you doing with that? Being able to discern when it's time to have wisdom to know the difference between what you can change and what you can't. The things that you can change but haven't indicate that you need more courage or maybe more knowledge, more understanding, so that you can move forward feeling confident about that change. The things that you can't change, mostly other people, and the situations that might come up that you... You have no, absolutely no control over who shows up at work and who doesn't. No control over that irritating coworker that refuses to come in on time, that causes you to have to start the day for them and for you, for the whole company. They're so inconsiderate. They can't leave a few minutes early to get to work on time. You always have to start the day waiting for them to come and serving all these other people or getting things up and running, you have no control over that. Unless you're the boss and can fire them, you have no control over what time other people get to work. You have no control over whether or not they actually do the job they're hired to do. The only thing you have control over is yourself and your response to different things. You see? So we do need discernment of when to act. Discernment to know that in this situation, I just need to accept that this is something I can't change. And I need to accept it in a manner that does not rock the boat for everyone else. Because there's something that comes with acceptance. It's not that I even agree with what is going on. I'm accepting that I can't change it. And with that, for me, I had to grow into, I'm not going to allow the world to see my feelings on my sleeves about this situation. Just because I'm accepting that I can't change it and I have to deal with it, I'm not going to be bitter and angry and resentful and unforgiving and throwing temper tantrums as I go about the day of having to accept this. Yeah, it's it's almost saying if, if I do do that, I'm not really accepting anything. There's something that comes with that spiritual principle of acceptance that takes away the need to make a point. It happens a lot at service meetings. A lot of times people get into debates at service meetings there's such a turn off and they leave thinking they, oh, I made that point. Well, no, actually you didn't. You didn't actually. You made some other points, but that point that you thought you were making was minute compared to the real point that you made that you have not gotten to the point where you can be a part of something bigger than yourself that everything has to go your way. That's the point that you made. And that if it doesn't, everyone's going to pay by having to deal with your attitude, your resistance, your begruntled sighs. Yeah, rolling your eyes, crossing your arms, going out for your smoke break. Yeah, that's the point that you made is that you still need to reach a level of maturity. But here's the thing, we all have moments where we say we accept things and we really haven't. We all have times like there's something going on in my life right now that needs to be changed desperately. And it's not that I don't have periodic jolts of courage. 
I just get so exhausted that I don't have sustaining energy to maintain the courage to change the things that I know I can. So we're all imperfect in it. We need room to be able to admit that and then go about the business of doing something different. I hope this meditation has been helpful. I know that you'll probably need to come back to it. You'll need to come back to it and think about just maybe not not your whole life, but just think about the last week. Did you display that you had the discernment of knowing when to act and when not to? When to press in with courage or when to let go with acceptance? Did you have that discernment, that wisdom? So I'll leave you with that. You've been in the flow of the stream today, so go out there and do something mighty. I believe in you. And I want January 14th to be the most beautiful day that you have lived ever. How about that? Ever. That's a big task, but I know you can do it one moment at a time, one second at a time, just for today. Have a beautiful day on purpose. Talk to you soon.